Let's go. You must stop with me now. Come on, get up. Go, 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 go. Uh, uh, uh. Victory, we got the victory. Yeah, 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 yeah. Dump the dumos. Come on, let's get it now. We're back. Welcome, guys. Hope you're doing amazing. Beware of letting snakes get close to you. Beware of snakes. In my favorite book, The Name of the Wind, it's actually the sequel, which is called The Wise Man's Fear. Our young hero, Quoth, is on a journey with his mates, and he comes across this this woman, this beautiful woman, and she's actually like a, like a spirit, like a part of the fey realm. She's not from this world. She's like something extraterrestrial she's out of this world and her beauty is out of this world she's voluptuous she has these big old spirit titties she has the perfect you know perfect hip uh you know waist ratio to booty ratio she's like a um like a kim k in the ethereal realm she's amazing and what she actually does is she alert she lures these guys in that are coming across her she lures her into her little grove and she has so much sex with them that they die of exhaustion. All right? And so Quoth knows this. And he's with his mates and they're traveling. You know, they're, they're doing God's work. They're going to, to where they need to be. They're on their journey. They're on the path. And Quoth sees this. And everyone else is like, I'm not going in there. I've heard of the fae. we got to stay away from this damn snake. We cannot let her corrupt us. Even though she offers us all of this, this amazing uh, pleasure, this decadence. We can't do it. We're going to die. But Quoth is is smart. You know, he's got a little bit of that darkness in him. A little bit of that power. He knows his power. And he says, you know what? I'm going to go in there. I'm going to go in. And for about literally 50 pages, man. And a lot of people had a, a bone to pick with this. And the author. But about 50 pages. Our boy Quoth is just going in there. And, and just going in. He's getting nasty with this spirit. Uh, this spirit girl getting just nasty day in and day out you know it's just it's just pretty explicit in the book too they're getting they're going down and eventually he's like you know i and he doesn't get corrupted she she kind of tries he doesn't do it though he's like you know i gotta get out of here i gotta get back so he comes back but no man had really been able to do this no man had really been able to do this and so that leads me you know let's just uh, let's go in even deeper think about the sirens odysseus and the sirens the sirens these mermaid witches, these, these girls that would sing to you, and, and it was such a beautiful sound, and the men, they would be alert to it. They hear this sound, they perk up, and they, they like go towards these sirens, and boom, they crash upon the rocks. But Odysseus was smart. He, he was also a man of courage, bravado, virility. He had the nuts, and he wanted to see it. You know, he had that risk in him, that, that high test, that high thumos spirit inside of him. And he said, you know, time to the post, the, the ship post, and and you guys keep rowing towards these sirens because I want to see them, but put beeswax in your ears. He was intelligent, he was smart, and he gets to see these sirens without dying, where everyone else had died. And it was just this fable, you know? No one knew if the sirens were real. He found a way to tame these serpents, to, to get close without letting them kill him and crush his soul. You'll notice that the story of Adam and Eve. What happens? Adam's close to God. He has Eve, his beautiful, beloved wife. They're running around naked, eating as much fruit as they want. They're calling animals by their names. They're touching animals. They're riding animals, you know. Just, they have dominion over the land. And then God says, just do me, don't, you need to do one thing. Don't eat from this tree. That's all I ask for you. Do not eat from the tree. That's it. You got everything else you can do. The world is yours. Have fun, right? It's not good enough for Eve. Eve gets close to a snake. The snake is, is the serpent, the devil. And he comes saying, hey, you know, Eve, come here. Psst, come here. Take a bite of this. And I'm telling you, just eat from this tree. You'll know what's good and evil. You'll know right, wrong. You will be enlightened. You will see what God does not want you to see. Stop living in ignorance. Eat the fruit, baby. And he gives her the fruit. And she takes a bite. And now she sees. And, he, and now she goes back to Adam. Say, like, Adam, baby, listen. Just eat this fruit. Trust me. And Adam's like, no, but God told me not to. Right? 
But he's like, you know what? Okay, all right, fine, let's do it. Boom, and then they just ruin it for everyone. They ruin it for everyone because he decided to get close to the snake. He let the snake in his life. He lost power, right? And this is this is a very good. These are great stories, and these are great analogies for looking at our life as men. What do we let near us? And most of us let women near us in a relationship. We enter, and I'm telling you, you take this away from this. The quicker that you can get over. The judgment, fearing the judgment of a woman, needing a woman's validation, you are going to become the man that God puts you here to be quicker. Okay. If you don't believe in God, that's fine. But you will become who you need to be strong, a strong individual, a stoic individual, a powerful person. If you do not get seduced by the sirens, if you do not get corrupted by the snakes. If you do not let something into your life and have let it have more control over you and get you off that narrow path. And you can tell when you're going off that narrow path. Things start to get shaky. start to question yourself. You kind of lose sight of your vision. You start to get consumed with what people think more and more. You start to get pulled apart like your self-esteem, your confidence starts to be shattered and, and more finicky. It's because you got your eyes off what is true and what is right and what is whole. And that happens when you let snakes into your life. And this could be a number of things, but I'm telling you, the number one snake that most of us have in our life is letting a woman get close to us. And I love women. Women are beautiful. They're great. It's great to be in a relationship that's healthy, That from a woman that's caring, that loves you. You can give that love back in turn. That's part of being a man. But you have to be careful. And the one thing is a lot of you are not ready to battle the snakes. You're not ready like that St. George to you know battle that dragon and just put it in its place and stand up. You're not ready like Moses in the Bible when God said, all right, throw it on the ground. Throw your staff on the ground. He turns that thing into a snake. And then everyone's freaking out. And then God tells him, listen, grab the snake by the tail. And if you do it, you're going to get bit. Like usually when you grab a snake by the tail, it's going to bite you. But Moses, listen, and what does he do? It turns back into his staff. And he's tamed. He's tamed it. He's powerful enough because he listens to what God has to say. He's powerful enough to surround himself by the snake, to pick it up by the tail and to have control over it and not fear it biting him because he has become a powerful enough individual, level-headed enough. And most men that get in relationships, they're not like that. They're not like that. They're too insecure in themselves. They don't have anything bigger going. There's no vision. It's simply hedonism and pleasure consuming their life. They just want to go and they crash upon the rocks. They go and they have this tons of sex and, and, you know, all this months of just a honeymoon phase and and then things are so good and then it's void and empty and they leave and that's all they know. That's all they know. And so the quicker that you realize you need to be a man that can be in charge, you need to be strong, then you can be in a relationship. Then you can, you no longer fear. And let's go to the last part of this video, the fear of woman, the fear of judgment from, from a female. And I think this usually starts with our mother. Back in the day, I used to, uh, I would be walking in the gym. Right? This was such, for years this happened, no joke, for years this happened. I was young, I was like early 20s, and I would walk into the gym. And as I'm walking down this hallway to go to the weights, there would be these, these like hot girls working behind the cash register, uh, the front desk. And I would like feel paralyzed. You know, I'd feel paralyzed when I would walk. It was like I was having this weird experience in my body where I, had to, I became over critical of my movements my physical movements, my walking, my gait. And I look back on that and it was all this judgment that I was afraid of. I was afraid of judgment. Even this day, I feel that. It's very easy to feel you do not want to be judged wrongly. You want to present your best self to the world. And so it creates this fear in your life. It's almost like Medusa. You know, the girl with the snakes on her head, the damn, uh, she looks at you and you turn to stone. What happens? You freeze. You're paralyzed because of judgment from someone else. And most of us are afraid of judgment. We want to please one. We want them to be happy with us. And I think it stems from our mother because think about it. Who, who are you, whose judgment do you fear more? Your mom's or your dad's, right? You, you know, you're jerking off in your room and you're watching porn and your dad comes in and he's like, son, I am disappointed. Right? He's like, son, I'm disappointing you. Okay. But I understand because I'm a man. I've probably jerked off before too. Your mom though, she comes in and it's like this. She's like, you know, it's like a freaking snake, dude. It's like, dude, your mom could you 
when your dad catches you, you know you're going to get beat, right? You know you're going to get beat. He's going to give you three lashings, and then you're going to be good to go. He's going to be, I love you, my boy. Just cut that shit out. Don't watch it. It's not good for you. But your mom is psychological, man. It's psychological warfare. It's psychological shame that you need to deal with. And a lot of times, especially if you grows, um, grew up in a re religious household, you're going to feel this. You're going to feel a lot of shame. A lot of shame in trying because you were taught you gotta you gotta be nice. You're a nice person. You gotta be nice to people. You gotta be you know you gotta be a, um uh have like be a gentleman and always be nice. And so you kind of grow up your whole life. You're always trying to please women. And you care about what they think about you. Growing up, you will become a man in your full power when you can step outside of trying to please them without caring. When you're in a relationship, you need to be a leader. You need to be soft enough to hear where you're going wrong and to maybe to have someone point out to your blind spots because then you'll just be a freaking tyrant and just this like crazy individual. But when you stop caring about the judging and always making her happy, you can just be calm. You can be a leader and she'll trust you. And that's a hard thing to explain until you actually know what I'm talking about. And I think some of you can, but when you get in relate, you can know when a girl trusts you, when she feels like you just, you're the man and she's the woman. And that's a beautiful chemistry to have. It is very amazing to have that. And so, you know, it usually I think can start from an overbearing mother that, that makes us feel this psychological shame and question ourselves and kind of gives us anxiety. I tell a lot of guys, you know, just, same thing Jesse Lee, Lee Peterson says, forgive your mom. You know, forgiving your mother is a great place to start if you find that you have this fear of women, this uh, fear of rejection, this, this paralysis that you may fear, this awkwardness in your own life, that. And so just remember, before you jump and shortcut and get into a relationship and go pleasure seeking, make sure that you build yourself into a weapon, into the type of man that can take on these serpents, that can be strong in body and mind, and that can go in without being manipulated, that can surround, that can actually get close to the snake pit, but leave unscathed, that can leave without getting bit and poisoned, and then ultimately death and away from your path in life. And so there's a beautiful verse in the Bible that says, I'm sending you out like sheep among wolves you must be as cunning as serpents and as innocent as doves it's a great verse because we we have to be savvy we have to be aware of to what's going on how the manipulation and what happens when we surround ourselves with this and we put someone else first instead of putting god first the truth and the path first that's what we got to be aware of all right so uh keep yourself strong keep yourself level-headed hope you enjoyed this message let me know if you need anything. Subscribe to the channel. Leave a like if you desire. And I'll see you soon. Peace.